Warning, chemistry is extremely dangerous. It involves the use of highly corrosive chemicals, strong oxidizers, and noxious gases. Please do not attempt to recreate without the proper background, knowledge of all chemicals involved, and safety precautions. This is PAM, also known as para-aminobenzoic acid. It's a dietary supplement with benefits that include the treatment of skin conditions and the formation of folic acid, but I want to make a topical anesthetic called benzocaine with it. The PABA I got came in these little gel capsules, so I had to try to get the powder out without spilling it everywhere or dropping it in the beaker. This obviously didn't work. In total, I spent over 10 minutes trying to get 20 of them open, but I was finally able to get the PABA I needed. To a 1 liter round bottom flask containing a stir bar and 10 grams of PABA, I added 200 milliliters of 95% ethanol. Wait. So for some reason, I had it in my head I used 20 grams of PABA instead of 10, so I accidentally used 200 milliliters of ethanol and 20 milliliters of sulfuric acid. It didn't mess up the reaction, but it was wasteful. The 100 milliliters and 10 milliliters would have worked just fine. Adding the sulfuric acid needs to be done slowly with strong stirring because it produces a lot of heat and you can actually even hear the bubbling when I add it. Once everything was mixed, I set up a reflux condenser so that the solution could be boiled without the risk of losing any of the ethanol. Most reactions reach completion faster when they get hot, just like your mother. This reaction actually does not have a completion point though, and instead has an equilibrium point. After undergoing an acid-catalyzed esterification, which is the two new carbon chain on the oxygen and benzocaine, it can be hydrolyzed by the water product, which pushes the reaction back to PABA. This means the less water in your starting chemicals, the more the reaction is going to be pushed more towards the benzocaine. It's preferable to use something like 98% or anhydrous ethanol, but 95% works just fine and my yield was still really good, even if it's probably because I used so much ethanol that my flask should be in an AA meeting right now. Eventually the solution cleared up and then once it started to boil it became this sort of off yellow color and I let it reflux for about an hour. After this I poured it into a beaker in order to neutralize it and was very surprised I didn't spill it since it was still way too hot when I picked it up and for some reason I just didn't let it cool off first. By adding a saturated baking soda solution, I converted the sulfuric acid to sodium sulfate and got rid of any remaining PABA. The baking soda fizzes and releases CO2 gas in a similar way to if you reacted it with vinegar. And no, I did not choke this time like with the piranha solution. The baking soda solution needs to be added slowly, as if the entire solution was poured in at once, it could very likely foam over, which I honestly just didn't want to deal with. I was also confused about that random shadow to the left the entire time before I realized my entire main light simply just was not on. Once the solution hits a pH of 8, a lot of the free base benzocaine immediately crashes out and floats to the top. With a baking soda solution, the pH will max out around 8 so it's not really possible to overdo it. Also don't ask me why I dipped the pH paper like that, I actually have no idea. While there was a lot of benzocaine floating on the top, I really thought the best part was seeing it float around the solution like a snow globe. I really would have preferred to vacuum pump this, and you can see that I have a flask with the nozzle for it, but I just simply don't have a pump, so I had to gravity filter it. I eventually got impatient and tried to push the liquid through, but it turns out that I'm actually not very smart and used a scupula with a point on it and it just ripped the paper, so I had to quickly swap it to a new filter paper and this time just suck it up and be patient. To wash the beaker and the filtered benzocaine, I just used some cold water. While the crystals were full of water, they looked very fluffy, but eventually gravity shrunk them down back to their normal size. After this, I laid the filter paper on a paper towel and left it to dry for a couple days. Once I came back two days later, it was still kind of wet. I tried chopping it up with a scupula and letting a fan run to see if it would help, but it really didn't do much. Since that wasn't working, I decided to implement an extremely high-tech chemistry instrument known as the hairdryer. After it was dry, the total weight came out to approximately 6.04 grams, which is roughly a 50% yield. 
It really could have been a bit better, but because of the mess up with the amounts of reactants, I really shouldn't complain that much. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I already have a list of around 10 more videos that I'd really like to start working on soon. I would also really like to get a schedule going where I upload at least once or twice a month, so I hope I can get in that rhythm. To finish up, here's my reaction to trying pure benzocaine. Keep in mind the maximum strength aura gel is only 20% benzocaine. Oh wow, that's... Yeah, that works. Mm, yeah, my my tongue, and I guess I sw I've swallowed some of it like that. That works. That works really well. Wow.